morning, everyone, and welcome to Robertson Wesley. My name is Reverend Karen Bridges, and this is our kids' worship service on Sunday morning. Uh, if you're joining us, I hope that you will send messages and respond using emoticons or comments so that we can have our dialogue, because worship is about not only worshiping God, but also sharing with one another our faith. So again, welcome to Robertson Wesley. As is our tradition, I'm going to start by lighting our candle. We light this candle to remind us that Jesus is our light and our guide in this world. So today I gathered with some of my friends here. Uh, we have Piggy and we have uh, Rabbit and Raggedy Ann and Froggy and the cow and all sorts of people here with me and it's just a, a great thing to see. Hello Charlie, good morning. I thought we'd start with singing a song. It's called One More Step Along the World I Go. Uh, partly because we are on a faith journey together. And so I thought it would be a, a good one to sing today. So as you get used to it, you can march around your room, you can just sing, you can just listen, whatever works best for you. But this is One More Step Along the World I Go. Imagine that this is Jesus talking to you and you and Jesus are going on a journey together. Again, hello everyone from Edmonton, Alberta. My name is Karen and I hope that you will respond and send comments and emoticons today as we worship in this wonderful space of Roberts and Wesley United Church. So we're going to sing one more step along the world I go just so that we can, hi Arlie, just so that we can get ready for hearing our story about what Jesus wants us to do today. One more step along the world I go, one more step along the world I go, from the old things to the new, keep me traveling along with you, and it's from the old I travel to the new, keep me traveling along with you. Round that corner of the world I turn, more and more about the world I learn, all the new things that I see. You'll be looking at along with me And it's from the old I travel to the new Keep me traveling along with you As I travel through the good and bad Keep me traveling the way I should Where I see no way to go You'll be telling me the way I know And it's from the old I travel to the new Keep me traveling along with When the world is rough Keep me loving though the world is tough Leap on singing all I do Keep me traveling along with you And it's from the old I travel to the new Keep me traveling along with you You are older than the world can be You are younger than the life in me Ever old and ever new Keep me traveling So today I want to talk about the people that we travel on this faith journey with. I want to talk about our faithful friends. I want to talk about Jesus who has invited us on this journey and how it looks after Jesus has left and been resurrected. So thinking about really good friends, I want to read a story to you today. And it's a story about Creole. So I'm just going to flip you around so that you can see the pictures of this story as I read it to you. So this is the story of Creole. I've had this book for a very long time. On a foggy, foggy morning in the land of the swamp, from a battered, speckled egg, Creole was born. She was huge, fat, and very, very ugly. She had warts on her fingers, warts on her toes, bony, pointed knees, and a big, flat nose. Beneath all of that, which made her so ugly, 
was the most beautiful heart that had ever beat anywhere in the world. And because of her beautiful heart, Creel thought the most beautiful thoughts that could ever be thought. She thought of love, for her heart was full of love. She thought of happiness, for her heart was full of happiness. And she thought of tenderness, for she was the gentlest of all the creatures. Day in and day out, she would sit alone, sniffing the flowers, talking to the trees that grew in the swamp. One day, as she was sitting near a large magnolia tree, Creel thought, Maybe I should share my love and happiness with the other creatures of the swamp. So with that in mind, she set off to find some animals that could become her friends. As noisy as that swamp could be with all the animals living there, it would fall into a silent hush as Creel walked by. The birds became quiet, the possums sat still, and the alligators all slipped away. They all thought that because she was so big and ugly, she just had to be mean too. Creole looked and looked, but she could not find a friend at all. Finally, with watermelon-sized tears falling at her feet, she sat with a heavy thump on a big old broken stump and cried and cried. Why won't anyone listen to me, she sobbed. The only thing I want in the whole world is just to have someone to tell my happy thoughts to. The tears rolled over her cheeks, bounced off her belly, slipped and slid down the log, and finally landed with a large kerplunk on the head of a baby alligator sitting just below. The little alligator looked around to see who had been throwing water on him when suddenly from above came another large tear. Grrr, plunk. He looked up, way up, and saw Creel. Why are you crying on me, stuttered the alligator. Creel looked down and spied the smallest, most pathetic alligator she had ever seen. I'm, I'm sorry, she sobbed. I, I, I didn't know you were down there. The last thing I want to do in the whole world was to hurt someone. Wiping a tear from her eye, Creel suddenly realized that the little alligator had not run away and was actually talking with her. Why, why didn't you run away like everyone else, asked Creel. Because I, I ho ho hope you will be my f f f friend, stuttered the alligator. The other alligators all l l l laugh, laugh at me because I stutter and can't talk straight. They looked into each other's eyes and realized that they were what each of them was looking for, a friend. For the longest time, Creel and her newfound friend sat and shared their friendship. After a while, Creel said, It's too bad you and I don't have more friends. I wonder what we could do to convince the other creatures not to laugh at you and not to be afraid of me. The little alligator nodded his head in agreement, and the two of them tried to figure out a way to talk with the other animals of the swamp. I know what we should do, Creel said. I can hide behind a big bush, and you can stand in front. When all of the animals have gathered around, I'll tell you what to say. Then you can talk about love and happiness. Well, the little alligator reluctantly agreed, and with Creel hidden behind a lilac bush, he nervously called to the other animals. A couple of times he got so scared he tried to hide, but each time she would gently shove him back out and tell him not to be afraid. Now the other animals of the swamp, not seeing Creel around, knew that it was safe to come out and listen to all the little alligator had to say. One by one, they all crept from the bushes, the berries, and the waters of the swamp. There were four or five big old alligators and a couple of small ones, two yellow snakes and a blue one, 23 birds of a feather, a lazy possum and his wife, and a great white heron. With all the creatures gathered round, the little alligator began repeating what Creel was whispering to him. He told them about the beauty of the early morning dawn and about the sunset over the swamp. 
He talked of love and beauty, and most of all, friendship. The animals were all amazed at what the alligator was saying and how clearly he was saying it. For you see, when the alligator didn't have to make up what he said, he didn't stutter at all. Everything would have been all right if it had not been for a nosy squirrel who happened to peek behind the bush where Creole was whispering from. The squirrel let out a yelp and shouted, Run as fast as you can! That huge, ugly creature is back! Creole was so shocked at being discovered that she tripped over a bush, scaring the creatures even more. Wait, 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 she cried. I'm not going to hurt you. We just want to be your friends. But the creatures wouldn't listen and scrambled over one another and ran away. The little alligator chased after them, shouting in a very clear voice, Stop! Creole is my friend and she would never hurt anyone. The other creatures, who by this time were hiding in the bushes, listened to the little alligator, and suddenly a wise old owl spoke from the branches over the pine tree. Perhaps you should believe him, he said, for his ugly friend Creole has stopped him from stuttering. Sure enough, during all the excitement of chasing the creatures, the little alligator hadn't stuttered a single word. Sheepishly, all of the creatures went back to where Creole was sadly waiting, with the little alligator leading the way. Creole, said the alligator, all my fellow creatures of the swamp are sorry that they judged you by how you look. But if you will forgive them, they would love to hear you talk of all the happiness in your heart. With a radiant smile overcoming her tears, Creole hugged each and every one of the creatures and made them all her friends. So friends, never judge somebody by the way they look or a book by the way it's covered. For inside those tattered pages, there's a lot to be discovered. And that is the end of our story. <clears throat> So why would I tell you this story about Creel and the alligator? Partly because sometimes faith communities are the one place we are truly accepted for who we are. And I think when we think about the qualities of, of a friend who is our spiritual friend, we think about the fact that they love us no matter what, that they trust us, that they can tell us anything, that they stand up for us when we are being hurt. And I think Jesus is a lot like that for us as well. And so I wonder if you can think of who is one of your best friends and what it is that you love about them and what they've done for you. What kind of friend do you have? Do you have a friend that you can tell everything to? When I think about it, we all have that kind of friend. And that friend is Jesus. Jesus is a person that we can speak to about anything that's in our hearts. And we do that through prayer. We can share all the good things that happen, all of the sad things, all of our fears, our worries. A couple weeks ago, we made little Jesus boxes where we could put our prayers into them. And we need to remember that even when they're folded up on a little piece of paper in a box, that God knows that Jesus is listening. Today in worship, a little bit later, we're going to hear a story from the Gospel of John. And John is the fourth Gospel in the Bible, uh, and it's the one that was written the furthest away from the time that Jesus was on earth. But in it, uh, Jesus says to the disciples the following, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now what was Jesus' big commandment? that we love one another as we would be loved. So we need to treat each other with respect, kindness, compassion, and love, kind of like the way Creole and alligator are. And remember how the, all, the, all the creatures in the swamp actually said they were sorry to Creole for the way they had treated Creole? That's the kind of friendship we're talking and that's the commandment that Jesus wants us to do. So Jesus goes on to say, and I will ask the creator, I will ask God, and God will give you another advocate 
to be with you forever, an advocate. What's an advocate? Well, Jesus goes on to explain. The advocate is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees the spirit of truth nor knows the spirit of truth. But you will know the spirit of truth, because the truth abides in you and you in the spirit. Um, and then Jesus says, I will not leave you orphaned, so I will not leave you alone. I am coming to you, and in a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live in you, and you will also live in me. So thinking about this, um, we know that Jesus dies and is resurrected, but what Jesus is promising is that we are going to experience that same feeling that we get from our friendship with Jesus in the form of the Spirit. And the Spirit is sometimes described as a, a feeling of warmth. Um, sometimes people feel like the Spirit is like the wind or our breath. Uh, there's lots of ways that we can experience the Spirit. And the Spirit is what we pass on to other people. And so even though we don't see Jesus here on earth because Jesus has died and has been resurrected, we see as Jesus would see the Spirit in each other. And so if we were truly to look at our friends, at our loved ones, at a stranger on the street, and look with the eyes of Jesus, we would see the good in all people. And when we see the good in all people, and remember, even though they might be being mean or, or saying something horrible to us, that if we work towards forgiveness, and forgiving one another for our mistakes and learning from them and truly loving somebody as we would be loved. Because I know when I make a mistake, I really hope that somebody will forgive me if I, for, if I ask for that um, and will still love me in spite of myself. And I have friends like that where we might fight, uh, we might say things we, we don't mean, and then later we realize that and we open up to each other and we share the, our stories and our truths so remember, the spirit of truth is what is within us. And we just need to find ways to share that with others. And so that's why I brought my friends here today. Um, they're often friends that give people here comfort in the church. Um, I know that you all like to grab a friend when you come to worship. And so I thought I'd bring your friends so you could see them again because it's been a while. And to think about if we were to pray to be the best friend we could possibly be, to be as much like Jesus as we can. What are some of the things that we would pray for? And if you wanna share them with me on Facebook, that would be lovely. What are the things you think we should pray for today? Is there anybody in particular, or should we ask for, for certain things to help us be a better friend? What do you think we should ask for today in our prayers? Tell me, friends, what should we pray for? Maybe we should pray, uh, <laughs> Pan says that I travel with my friends everywhere. Twiggy, Ted, and now Elfie have joined our ranks. That's lovely. Thank you, Pan. I'm glad you are here um, joining us. This is the best part about this virtual world is that even though we might be separated by miles and miles, thousands of miles even, countries even, we are still here for one another, which is just lovely. So why don't we pray that everyone stays safe? We should pray, ask to be kind, uh, ask for kind and helpful friends. Yes, I agree. That's a wonderful idea. All right, Arlie, I will add that into the prayer. All right, friends, so if you can find a, a good spot where you can really settle down, take a deep breath so that we can pray together. And some people, it helps if you hold your hands or fold them. Um, sometimes it helps if they're just on your, your knees. Close your eyes so that you're not distracted by anything else. Uh, we're gonna pray for fun times and for adventures. All right. So let us join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we are so glad that even though you have gone, you are still with us. You are with us in spirit. We ask that this spirit help us to be the best friend we can be to others. We hope that we will be able to find kind and loving friends out in the world that uh, will be with us, that will 
understand us and listen to us and just be with us so that we can hang out together so that we can have some good times and great adventures. We hope that we will remember that even if we fight, that we can ask for forgiveness, that we can change our ways so that we can be better friends to one another. Help us to listen and be truthful be with one another, that you believe in us and that you are always, always with us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, yes, and we will definitely include those prayers, Pen, as well. Um, I wonder if we should say the Lord's Prayer together. I don't know if you've learned the Lord's Prayer, but I think that's something we should start working on. Um, so I'm going to say it, and I hope that you will say it with me. And we'll try and do this from now on so that we can learn the Lord's Prayer together. And you can always ask your parents to help you to memorize it. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Arlie, for all the amens. I love it. So let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So that's something you can start working on. Um, I thought we'd sing another fun song. It's called, And On This Path. The gates of holiness are open wide. And it just repeats, and on this path, the gates of holiness are open wide. And on this path, the gates of holiness are open wide. Open wide, open wide, the gates are open wide. Do you know why the gates are open wide? Because Jesus and God invite all of us in. It's not holding anybody out. Um, that's, that's the whole point of being a faith community, is that every single person, creature, piece of creation is welcome here. And it doesn't matter how you dress, it doesn't matter what you look like, it doesn't matter if you're grumpy that day, you are all welcome here. So let's sing, and on this path, the gates of holiness are open wide. It's in more voices number eight if you have a hymn book. So enter in, the gates of holiness are open wide. So enter in, the gates of holiness are open wide. So enter in, the gates of holiness are open wide. So enter in, the gates of holiness are open wide. Open wide, open wide, open wide, the gates are open wide. And on this Holiness are open wide on this path. 
we are all welcome, that we, like the alligator and Creole, want to make sure that we are friends with all people, no matter whether they are a rabbit, a frog, a cow, a donkey, um, piggy, raggedy Ann. We are all welcome. And God loves us exactly the way we are because God created us. Um, as you go this week, I want you to think about how has Jesus helped you? What is it that Jesus has done in your life to help you? How has your faith strengthened you this week? So give that some thought. Share your answers with your spiritual friends. Um, you can always send them a message, uh, write them a card. You can send them a little care package, whatever works for you. And know that this week we will meet again on Thursday. I'm going to be going to a conference, so I'm not going to be around. Obviously, Monday's a holiday. Um, and then on Wednesday, I'm going to be doing a virtual conference um, with preachers around the world. So I'm very excited about that. But I will be back with you on Thursday at 11 o'clock. So friends, go from here knowing that you are not alone, that God loves you. And we miss you and can't wait to see all of your faces again, which will be a little while longer. But take care. We will see you soon. Bye.